Well, I wanted to uh, work, uh, welcome everyone to the uh, 14th Annual Symposium of the uh, Case Visual Sciences Research Center. I I'm Jonathan Lass. Uh, I'm the director of the center and have a few other hats. Um, it's, uh, this has been a uh, uh, truly momentous year. Last year, we kind of kicked it off uh, with that special presentation on the 20th anniversary of our department. And um, th this year has seen uh, also a tremendous changes. Uh, um, I, for one, ha made the announcement this past uh, March that I'll, I'll be stepping down as chairman. Um, and they have now initiated a search process for that. But I'm, I'm, I'm delighted that I'll be able to stay on the faculty uh, for at least the next five years, because my grant goes for another <laughs> five years, and uh, join you as, as just members of the faculty in the audience, which I, I, I thoroughly look forward to, uh, hopefully um, by sometime the end of next year, uh, sometime next year. Um, the um, other thing, personally, I, we, was um, we uh, really representing the, the growth of uh, not only the basic sciences, which this, re this symposium primarily represents, but the clinical sciences that we received a, uh, uh, a U10 award uh, where our, our department is uh, overseeing the um, coordination of over 35 clinical sites in, in a multi-center perspective clinical trial. So we're going to be learning uh, an immense uh, amount of, um, of how to coordinate these trials. Uh, uh, and I think this will be helpful to translate many of your findings, uh, ultimately, uh, as, as they should reach that stage in, into a multi-center trial. So I think those capabilities that we're developing now with this trial could translate uh, once you have reached that stage of, of that we can assist you um, as uh, to run a multicenter clinical trial, which is a whole nother animal going beyond the laboratory. Um, the other, um, the other major, um, uh, the other major uh, event uh, is is the, uh, and we'll be uh, commenting on that is the. Uh, uh, Dr. Brady Conley, uh, I think you've received her announcement. She's done a fantastic job after assuming the administration of the training grant from John Porter when he went to NIH. Uh, Suzanne has done a fantastic job running that training grant. We've all immensely benefited from that, and she's going to be stepping down from that role and transferring that uh, for molecular, bi molecular biology to, to um, to our department uh, under uh, Dr. Perlman's uh, supervision. Um, the, um, so uh, she um, had, had led the uh, renewal of that grant and it's funded through 2015. So this is a great time to transition this so, uh, so Dr. Perlman can uh, uh, begin the administration of that and have that well in shape when it has to come up for, for renewal again. And, and I think a, a great example of, of the success of that uh, was uh, David uh, Ladowski's uh, getting an, an ROO from the NEI, a highly competitive award, uh, really, uh, which was uh, of more, most recent uh, achievements of this training grant. Uh, so congratulations to David. Um, other, other highlights this year besides my, my uh, grant was uh, I think we're always thrilled when a junior investigator can translate from a K award uh, over into an R award. So, uh, you know, we are very pleased that uh, Paul Park was awarded an R01. Uh, Akiko Maeda was part of the uh, R24 effort with Dr. Palcheski, and it looks very, very uh, promising that she will uh, also be getting an R01 uh, sometime this year. Um, the uh, senior faculty programs within our department have expanded with Dr. Perlman and Pickaleva. And uh, the core grant was successfully restructured. We should be hearing any day, day now about its um, refunding. We're extremely optimistic that it will get funded. The NIH ranking, and uh, you know, we can measure our, our, our success certainly most importantly by our publications and uh, ultimately, ultimately translation uh, of those findings to benefit our patients. Um, but uh, we, uh, deans tend to measure uh, our productivity by uh, our funding and where we rank. 
so our ranking uh, as a department of ophthalmology rose from 29 to 18, according to one private consulting group. And if you look at overall as a visual sciences research center, we're, we're either ninth or tenth in the country in terms of NIH funding uh, from, from the Eye Institute. So we are, have really uh, uh, risen tremendously within the scientific community. And this symposium is certainly a reflection of that, of that power of, of our collaborative effort uh, together. Um, philanthropy also plays a major role, and donors are increasingly recognizing the, the significance of our work. Uh, we received a $5 million gift from the Prentice Foundation from the um, granddaughter uh, of the first ophthalmologist and one of the first deans of the School of Medicine, uh, Dr. Milliken. This is Dr. Milliken with his patient, and this little girl here was the mother of, the, um, of, uh, of this, um, uh, who married Dr. Milliken, uh, and, and this is the granddaughter of that. So this was ultimately translated into a $5 million gift uh, to our department helping the institute. We've also established um, two professorships there and this year in, in two weeks. Uh, Dr. Perlman will be honored as the first Paige Reinhardt professorship here in this auditorium. Hope all of you can attend and hear his, his lecture. And uh, we just uh, also established a, a new professorship in pediatric ophthalmology to, for Dr. Orgay. Um, the, um, other uh, research highlights, we, we cannot simply concentrate on uh, just federal funding. Uh, those, that funding is continuing to get tight. The dean has certainly been promoting that we need to look at other avenues of funding be, beyond just NIH. Uh, so our, our corporate activity uh, continues to increase as well, and all of you should be continually looking at that. Uh, Dr. Schottke got a new award from Vistacon on her contact lens work. Uh, Tadeo Maeda uh, F Foundation Fighting Blindness, et cetera. Um, the overall funding within our department has uh, in increased both, uh, as you can see, both with industry, uh, particularly has increased, as well as uh, federal funding. Um, and this is the um, industry-sponsored uh, grants. Um, I talked about our Another major area of, of, of the department's focus has been our reading centers, and this has have grown both with the corneal image analysis reading center and the retinal reading center. And we're now moving into a 3,000 square foot space uh, off campus, but still part of the university and the hospital, a 3,000 square foot space on Midtown Corridor. It's about a mile down the road towards downtown in a new research building there. So this will allow us to continue to expand both for federal and corporate research studies in this area. Um, as you know, the, the VSRC, we have new faces every year, so I always, it's important to at least know our history. We were founded in 1996, and, and we got our first core grant uh, uh, in 1997. I was uh, the PI on that first core grant, and then transferred that to uh, Eric uh, uh, in 2000, I can't remember, <laughs> uh, 2006, thank you. Uh, and then our training grant came in 2000. Uh, this, uh, and I, I certainly re recommend you go to the website uh, of the VSRC. These are all the departments that are participating both um, at the graduate level at the School of Medicine and we also have undergraduate departments. For example, we have a excellent investigator in chemistry who is also participating in the VSRC. Um, and and the, the uh, VSR consists of not only our core grant, our training grant, the seminar series, this annual symposium we're co conducting today, and the pharmacology course that Paul Park has been leading. Um, this is the, uh, and it probably needs to be updated uh, because there have been new grants, but uh, we have over 20 investigators, at least 20 investigators funded uh, from the Eye Institute. And at this point, probably nearly more like 50, about $50 million in terms of total funding. Um, and this shows the growth uh, over the last, uh, uh, you know, five, uh, five six years. Uh, most recently this year, you can see uh, we're, we're uh, well over $10 million in total funding coming from the Eye Institute. 
I, I would uh, alert you to some, just I'm going to conclude with, um, I would alert you to some other resources um, and, and perhaps we can have a discussion at some point uh, in, in light of the whole um, uh, point that the dean is stressing to not just be looking at federal sources of funding, but the Harrington Institute, I, I would recommend that you learn more about that, uh, particularly it, it, is, it has both a nonprofit and for-profit uh, structure to sponsor scientists. The most recent program is they're going to have a competitive uh, process of uh, $200,000 for two years as for sponsoring individuals that have ideas that could lead to product development and take that to the market and have that ability and working with many different, not just uh, a few uh, um, drugs, but multiple, and they're, they're going to have the capability of managing multiple products at, at one time. Um, this was just announced a, a few months ago. And uh, the Jonathan Stamler's running that. There's a very illustrious scientific board that's supporting this. And uh, we'll get the slide to you, but it, uh, you can learn more about that on their website at, the, uh, at UH. Um, certainly, there, the CTSC was just renewed again under the dean's leadership. And uh, we, you should continually look at their website at, for all the core facilities that the CTSC supports. It's a $60 million grant and has many different things to offer. So I, I definitely would recommend that you see what they're doing. And, and the core facilities are also as a, uh, and maybe Eric can talk about this, they have now worked out a high throughput screening program uh, with the University of Cincinnati. I would, I would recommend that, looking at that program as well. Um, when they uh, were funding about nine or 10 projects uh, as of this as of spring, the person to talk to about this is Stephanie Weidenbecker. So I think I'm going to, uh, that will end my remarks, and I, I'll uh, have Eric now uh, speak more specifically about the core grant and some of the other uh, programs of the VSRC. Um, we put together uh, what I, I thought was a fairly strong renewal um, earlier. When did we put that in? September, I guess it was. And uh, got a, a Why do you speak at the mic? and we got um, a, a good score. So I'm told it was a good score. We got a 24, whatever that meant. Uh, and so I called the program officer to find out. Well, what does that mean? Uh, and was told that it means that it's, it's, it's a pretty good score. So um, it, it turns out to be a good percentile. The NEI, in its great wisdom, funds most of the uh, the core grants um, because they want. You know, when times are hard and they might be later in this year, um, it's very important to have uh, this uh, core facilities that all of us and junior people as well as senior people can uh, can utilize. Uh, and uh, I think uh, I think the uh, council met yesterday, and uh, I've yet to check and see what the final word is. But I, I I expect to hear positive results on that. As soon as I do, you will all hear about that. Uh, of course, the first people who hear about it will be the module managers uh, as well they should. But I think there's room for optimism with that. So things are going extremely well. And, the, uh, and right now, the I Institute has been doing quite well. And I just came back from study section, um, uh, which is why I'm not as prepared for things as I, as I should be. But um, uh, it was a fairly optimistic meeting. There's funding there. The funding levels are quite comfortable at this point. And uh, you know, we're, be we're all being encouraged to go in with uh, new grants. Uh, and, um, and renewals, of course. Um, so those are the main points that are, that are here. I think John hit the highlights for, um, for the new grants that have been awarded, and we're very excited for, uh, for Paul Park getting uh, his first R01. It looks very likely that um, Akiko will get her R01. Um, and if council met, then you'll find out about your first submission. But even if you don't, a seventh percentile for your second submission is pretty good. Ram Nagara has just got an extremely good score uh, on his grant. Uh, a new person in our group is uh, Arna Reich from Molecular Biology and Microbiology, who got his first R01, uh, and it's through the I Institute. So good, good going there, Arna. <laughs> That's great. Uh, and so it's all been it's good news. I mean, we have um, to get the maximum amount for the, uh, the core facilities. Um, core grants, we need 20 R01s. And right now, with those new grants, 
with the renewals and with arenas in particular, has her, her, uh, her uh, I grant was just recently renewed. We are up to the grand total of 19. So um, we need one more, uh, we need volunteers to go in for one more R01. And then I can approach the, uh, the uh, program officer and see about getting that extra 25,000 a year, which I think would, would that be okay, Angela? That'd be okay, right, okay. So let me know as soon as you get that, whoever gets that 20th grant will get the grand prize of hopefully a lot of money. Anyway, before uh, we start uh, the day, and it looks like we'll start a few minutes early, but uh, at this point, uh, I would really like to uh, have all of us um, thank Suzanne Brady Calney for years of diligent service, hard work, administrative misery, <laughs> and, and uh, everything else. And so please come on up, Suzanne. Thank you for all your efforts serving as the director of the training grant and in recognition of that as principal of the visual science major center training grant. Thank you so much. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm a little present. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I just want to say uh, thanks to everyone who's been involved in the program over the years. I decided that it was time to turn over the reins to maybe. Maybe not someone younger, but someone um, <laughs> that's still doing um, visual sciences research so they can take it into the next renewal in the next couple of years and uh, successfully. Well, it's not for another three years, you said. Yeah, I, I, maybe two and a half, I don't know. But um, take it into the next renewal and uh, keep the program strong. And uh, I also wanted to say I was a module director for 10 years for molecular biology. And the module directors are the heart of this center, and I really thank them for all their efforts. And I thank all the students and trainees for the, their support of me over the years, and I wish everyone great luck. Thank you.